Lesman bring out new tools every year. It's really hard to stay on top of all the different models that they have. In this video, I'm going to go through four of the top Leatherman models that I like the most. I'm going to talk about price, the kind of features they have, and ultimately what I use them for, in case that's something that's useful to you. I'm also going to talk about one model they brought out that I really don't like. I don't think it fits the bill. I'm going to talk about one model that competitors have that's actually better than Leatherman. How's it going, folks? My name's Marcus. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here on this channel, I like to talk about technology, EDC, and anything that can help me live a happier, balanced, more productive life. This video is brought to you by Bellroy. More on them later. The first Leatherman on my list is the Leatherman Skeletool CX. I really like this one. I bought this one a number of years ago, and I like it because it's so lightweight. So the intended use for this is that it's supposed to be something that you can carry with you in your pocket, have with you all the time. It's reasonably chunky, but it's not super heavy. And it's one of the reasons that I like this. It's kind of a stripped down bare basic Leatherman, not your typical Leatherman multi-tool. It comes in at $90, so it's on the lower end. These multi-tools are super expensive these days. And it's got some basic features with it. It's got seven tools, which is not a lot. Some of these tools are up in the high teens, so you can get a lot out of these. It's got seven of some of the most useful tools you might use. So let's go through what it's got. So it's got the Leatherman pliers, it's reliable. It's not the biggest pliers and it's not spring assisted, but it does work. It's got a grip and it's got a wire cutter uh, section to it as well. So it's got a needle nose pliers, it's got a regular pliers, and it's got a wire cutters. Those are the first three, and those are housed within the, the top of the tool here in the pliers part of the tool. It's also got hand wire cutters, it's got a knife, it's got a carabiner, which doubles as a bottle opener, and it's got a large bit driver. But you can see it's really basic in terms of capabilities. When you open it up, you've basically got almost everything that you have available in this tool. So one of the things I really like about it is in this bit driver, it's lockable. So it comes, it's two Phillips screwdrivers here that come in and out, but it's also got a section in the body which lets you house two more tools. So one more bit or two more tools. And this is the flathead section. So you really can change out for, depending on what you want, if you were to buy one of these Leatherman bit extender kits, which are expensive in themselves, but you can, for your own needs, depending on what you want to carry with you, you can have four screwdrivers that fit in here, which you can use to your own convenience. Now, it's not the easiest thing to use because it's tucked away when you close it like this. So in order to use it, you end up getting it at this kind of weird angle, which as you know, it works. Look, it's to get you out of a pinch. And I think that's the key thing with all of these Leathermans is that I treat them as get me out of a pinch. I would rather have a Phillips screwdriver than not, for example. But if I have my tool bag with me or I have any other way of screwing something in, I'm probably going to do that. In terms of one-handed open, this is a good device. I think it opens quite smoothly. It's got 554 cm steel on the knife and it locks into place. It is a locking blade, which is important for folks in, in Europe or Ireland or the UK or that part of the world where you're not allowed to have locking blades. I want all any blade that I have to be a locking blade. It's just safer for working with things. And you can see from this blade that it's got a little bit of rust on it and I haven't been taking total care of it, but it's only because I use it like all my things. It is a tool. It's there to be used and abused and I do just that. Out of all the tools I'm going to talk about today, this is actually my least favorite tool. I would recommend it to people who want to get started with Leatherman, don't want the bulk of a Leatherman tool, and just want the convenience of maybe a couple of different tools within it. It's cheap, it's safe. If somebody doesn't have one, it's a good stocking filler or a Father's Day present, something like that. Of my four top favorites, it is the lowest on that list. Next up on the list is the Leatherman Wave Plus, and this is a fantastic tool. This is kind of the classic go-to. This is the Leatherman you think of when you say, Leatherman, this is the one that you're actually thinking of. And you know, it's a huge, it, people love this. There's a cult following of the Wave Plus and rightly so, it's a fantastic multi-tool. So in terms of the tools housed just here in the head of it, it's got, I think six or seven. It's got a needle nose pliers. It's got a regular pliers. It's got premium replaceable hard wire cutters. It's got electrical crimper and it's got wire strippers all just in the top of it here. And this is a game changer in terms of it having replaceable wire cutters and hard wire cutters. This is one of the things that really makes it a step above the Skeletool here, for example, because it means you're not going to be afraid to use it in a real work sense. If you do damage those, those wire cutters, they're very easy to change out, very accessible. You can just keep a couple of those changes with you in your toolbox, things like that. So it makes it a really great tool for that, a really useful tool. 
But besides that, if we look at some of the tools that it's got, it's got a lot of single-handed use tools. So it's got a knife and a one-handed use knife at that. This knife is lovely and sharp. It's 420HC knife. It's got a very thin, uh, you know, it's got a kind of a scalpel blade towards the end of it, but it's a very sharp knife and I've really enjoyed using it. It's, but that's not the only blade it's got on it. It's also got a serrated knife as well on the other side. And again, very easy to open single-handedly. All of these tools lock in place, which is again, one of the requirements for these tools to make them safer is lock in place. And it's possible you can even close them one-handed as well by pressing down on the lock and pushing down with your other finger. So a really great one-handed tool. On the other side, you've got the saw. Not sure how you're supposed to get these out one-handed. I'm sure people can, uh, but you've got a saw on the other side that you can take out. And it's also got a diamond cutter. Again, lock in place, very great secure tools, just really, really useful. And you can see from these tools that these are things that I use pretty regularly here. I, I do have a story about this one. This Leatherman Wave is actually not my original Leatherman Wave. My wife got me that, but I lost it on a recent camping trip and I was so gutted to have lost it. The day I lost it, I actually went out and bought another one and that's this. So this is not as beaten up as the one that I used and abused and loved for a long time. That's on the side of the road somewhere here in California. But uh, this one, reasonably new to me, but I do use it all the time. Okay, moving on. After the saw, you've got the spring action scissors. And that's when we talk about some of the tools that are inside the handle of the blade. So it's got this push down where you can, you can use your thumb to either push down on it or hook your nails in. But these tools come out reasonably easily. I did actually have this at the beach and it's got some sand in it and that's making it a little bit harder. Going through the tools that we have on one side, we've got a spring action scissors, we've got a ruler, we've got a can opener, a bottle opener, we've got wood, metal files, diamond coated file, large bit driver, small bit driver, and finally a medium screwdriver. So one of the great things about this is you don't have to compromise in terms of the drivers that you use. Some multi-tools in the past have had you could either pick a small bit driver or a large bit driver. This one has both and that's really fantastic. So if I want to use the small bit driver for something like on my glasses, if I'm doing a small repair on my glasses or if I actually need to screw in a screw or, or you know a, a large a flathead or a Phillips, it's got both of them here and they're really reliable. The scissors on the Leatherman Multi-Tools I don't love. They're not as good as the Victorinox scissors. I feel like they're the, they set the standard for the best kind of scissors that you can get, but they're pretty good. Also a flathead or slash pry bar on this. I think it's good. All these, as you bring them out, as I said, they lock into place, even these tools, and they've got this really great way of unlocking. It's this kind of T-lock on the back, and you can lock and unlock that T-lock to get the most out of the tools. So for example, if I was using the screwdriver here, I would uh, get rid of the bottle opener. Um, and this is how I would use it. And, and that's probably the best angle you can get. Similar to the skeleton tool, it's not quite dead on, but it's not as bad. You just, you have more leverage. It just feels good. I've used it uh, to screw things in and out. It's good in a pinch. All of these things with Leatherman are all for when you're in a pinch. I don't recommend that you bring it as like your only tool to do a job. Even if you're just trying to rewire an outlet or something like that, it's gonna break your heart. Could you do it? Yes. In a pinch, can you do it? Yes. Should you do it if you have other tools? No, because you're just gonna make it harder for yourself. So for $120, I think that this is the best Leatherman multi-tool. And ultimately, of all of these, this is my favorite. Even though it's the second least expensive multi-tool I'm going to talk about here. If you're thinking of a multi-tool, if you've never bought a Leatherman, getting the Leatherman Wave Plus, you'll be super happy. I've actually paired mine with a pocket hip leather pouch, which you can see is nicely beat up. I wear this on me when I'm camping or if I'm going out doing outdoorsy things. It makes me feel like a hunter. It makes me feel awesome. You know, I don't typically wear this if I'm going to Starbucks or if I'm walking around. And I actually don't bring a leather one with me in my pocket because they are too heavy for me as a pocket carry tool to have all the time. But if I'm going out doing something or if I'm working in the garden or even if I'm working in the shop, I will have this on my hip just to get me out in a pinch. If you're holding something with one hand, you can always get your Leatherman out, do something one-handed with it, and put it away again, and it is super useful. So if you're looking for a gift for someone, super safe, even if they have one already, to stick it in the truck or just keep it as a second one, guaranteed it's a safe bet. Speaking of quality brands, I just want to do a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Bellroy. Bellroy makes fantastic products that I've bought myself personally for years. Whether you're looking for bags, wallets, or different ways to organize your tech as you travel, Bellroy has a fantastic solution for you. Personally, at the moment, I'm using the Bellroy Tokyo laptop bag, messenger bag, for all of my travel. And I'm going to be making a video on this specifically in the next couple of weeks because I absolutely love it. And some of you who's watched this channel before might know that I've been carrying this bag, this sling, whenever I travel anywhere. This is the nine liter Venture sling that I carry with me. They do various different types of wallets as well, whether you like kind of front pocket carry or you want bigger wallets for your back pocket, they have those. And I really like the Tokyo Folio line in general. 
I've been using the Tokyo Folio line to carry my iPad mini. When I use my iPad mini 6 for my travel and my trips, when it's the only device that I'm bringing, I love to bring my Tomio Rivier notebooks, my iPad mini 6, and all the things I need for that trip in this small Tokyo Folio because it's the perfect size for me. These are products that I can definitely stand over, things that I've been using myself. So I'm happy to partner with Bellroy and thank you for sponsoring today's video. Okay, back to the content. Moving on from that though, is the Leatherman Free P2. And this is a newer multi-tool than the Leatherman Wave Plus. And it's kind of where the Wave Plus is like the really robust, versatile, has 18 features in it, and you can kind of smash it up and ding it up. I feel like this is like the, the, you know, the gentleman's version of a Leatherman. It looks more refined. It's got magnets inside in it. It is single-handed open as well, and it's very satisfying to open. It's kind of shinier, and it essentially has a lot of the same features as the Wave Plus. This has 19 features, the Wave Plus had 18, and it's $10 more, so it comes in at about $130. It's got a deep carry pocket clip on it when you buy it, and I'm gonna run through real quick some of the features that it has and then maybe show you some of the, my favorite things um, of those. So first and foremost, it has needle nose pliers. It's got a regular pliers, premium replaceable wire cutters, premium replaceable hard wire cutters, electrical crimper and wire strippers. All the same things that you get on the Wave Plus um, in a slightly different form factor. It's got the 420HC combo knife. It's got a spring action scissors. It's got package openers. It's got a can opener, a bottle opener. It's got a wood and metal file. It's got a Phillips screwdriver, a medium screwdriver, a small screwdriver, extra small screwdriver, pry tool, and a ruler. So that brings us to 19 features in total. So similar to the Leatherman Wave, you can open the tools from the outside. So let's just open the knife. Now I've not used this one as much, so you can see it's tighter. And it's actually got a different locking mechanism. It's super easy easy on the, the Wave Plus. It's kind of a very simple lock in place tool. It's kind of liner lock. This one's got these little, these the, you can kind of push them back and forth to get the tools back in and out. So if you, if you want to do it two handed, it makes it much easier. You can pull it back and just pull it out. But it is a one handed open. Every single tool on this, you can take out one handed, which is great. The ergonomics are just fantastic. I don't know how they do it when they're designing these things. So that's the knife. It's got the scissors. It's got a bigger scissors than you get on the Wave Plus and more functional, I would say. This is definitely a better scissors but still not as good as the Victorinox of which I'm a big fan again that scissors locks out also how you get these tools out so what's different on the uh, wave a lot of those small tools are on the inside handle but here everything is on the outside which does actually make it a bit better in terms of ease of use for taking things out one-handed for me the way it works is you push up with your thumb on those things and they just pop up so you pop up, there you've got your Phillips screwdriver, your flathead screwdriver, you've got, uh, there's your knife, which we talked about already. Then on the other side, if you push up on them, there's much more on this side. You've got the bottle opener, you've got the awl, you've got the ruler, you've got the file, things like that. Now I would say the tools that are included in this, for me are actually not as good or not as useful as the usability of the Wave Plus. Because with the Wave Plus, you can change out your small screwdriver, you can change it out for different things. You can have your flathead and your Phillips screwdriver and change it out with all these different bits here as well just much more versatile much more customizable whereas i think this this leatherman is largely focused on how easy is it to get it to open one-handed and just those kind of luxury just the gentleman feel about it so ultimately it's actually not my favorite tool i really like it i like the magnetic feel it is something i like to play with it clicks nicely things like that it's it's just nice small and compact it reeks quality but not as useful to me as the Wave Plus. That's why the Wave Plus is my favorite. But they did just bring out something incredible. It's only been out for a couple of months. So the most premium Leatherman that I have is the Leatherman Arc. I got this for Christmas. It only, it only came out just before Christmas. My wife got me this for Christmas and it is a $230 Leatherman tool. So you could actually buy two Wave Pluses for the price of this one. So why is it so expensive? Well, where the Wave Plus had 18 tools and the Free P2 had 19, this one has 20 tools. Of course, it had to have more tools if they're gonna charge this kind of money for it. This is a really interesting tool because it has the kind of gentleman's feel of the Free P2, although it is quite different, but it really feels like a more luxurious version of the Wave Plus. So let's talk through the tools that it has. It's got a magna cut knife blade. It's got needle nose pliers, regular pliers, large bit driver, diamond coated file, small bit driver, wood metal file, a pry tool, premium replaceable wire cutters, premium replaceable hard wire cutters, impact surface, large screwdriver, bottle opener, can opener, spring action scissors, saw, wire stripper, electrical crimper, and an edge file. 
But what does it really mean, mean in the hand? Well, in terms of opening, it feels much more similar as a one-handed open feels more like the free P2. It opens kind of easier than the Wave Plus. And it really feels premium. It feels like a gentleman's tool. It's got a decent size pliers on it. And again, it has those, you can change things out because they are premium replaceable hard wire cutters and replaceable wire cutters. You don't mind actually using it for that reason. In fact, when this first came out, there was a bunch of videos on YouTube of people trying to cut coat hangers and breaking the replaceable wire cutters on them because the wire cutters that came with it originally were not the best, but you can just buy replacement wire cutters. You shouldn't have to for $230, but you can. And it's a tool that's intended to be used. It feels like a quality premium pliers and everything on this is openable one-handed in the same way that the ease of use you get from the free P2. So it opens in the same way. You push on the outside and the tools pop out, but more similar to the Wave Plus, you've got the versatility of being able to change out. Do you want to have the, you know, the, the small screwdriver or the, the big bit driver? You can carry these, you know, these, these bigger bit sets with you, as I said, which makes it even more versatile again. But it really feels like they've taken the best of each world from the Leatherman Free, the kind of gentleman's look and, and the ease of use things uh, of opening everything one hand and the actual functionality and usefulness of the Wave Plus put it all together and created something absolutely amazing. Another thing you're really paying for here is you are paying for the Magna Cut Steel. This is a very fantastic blade, the best blade they've ever put on a Leatherman. So if you're like a knife person or it's really important for you to have really great steel, this is it and you're paying a premium for it. It locks in place. It uses the same locking mechanism as the Free P2 and it's really reliable. I like it a lot. Pulling out the scissors, it's the same standard scissors that you get on the Free P2. Not a huge fan, as I said, but um, it is what it is. It's better to have them than not. In terms of pulling out the diamond file and pulling out the saw, again, super easy, lock in place, fantastic little tools. If this is like the amalgamation of everything that Leatherman has done, it's kind of the pinnacle of everything that they can do. Why is it not top thing on my list? Why is it not my number one pick? Fundamentally, it's the price. It's a heavy tool. It's heavier, I feel like, than the Wave, but it, but it's it's expensive. And I think that, you know, just going for the most expensive thing is not always the right way to do things. It is fantastic and I do love it. I probably wouldn't have bought it for myself given the price of it, but given that my wife bought it for me, I'm gonna cherish it forever and, and I'm delighted that I do have it. But in terms of recommend, making recommendations to friends and they say to me, which tool should I get? I always say get the Wave Plus. You can't go wrong, it's $120 and you get a hell of a tool for that price. Which brings me on to the next section. Leatherman have brought out a tool which I really don't understand. I'm not sure who would buy it. And I actually created a whole video on it here if you're interested in the specifics. But Leatherman decided to bring out these tools which are basically the arms of the Leatherman Free P2 series. So they're like bigger, like if you took one of those arms, you took the pliers out of it, this is what you'd be left with. Now in terms of it being just a pocket knife, for me it's too chunky. It's too thick and yes it has more than just a pocket knife. It has a lot of the capabilities that you get in one of the arms of these tools but it's not worth the heft and the bulk of having this in your pocket. If you're someone who carries a knife on the daily, for me, it's not worth it. But talking about it, it does bring out, you've got the same blade that you have on the, the P2. It's a locking blade, it locks in place, but given the heft of this, this the sheer, sheer size of it, you're getting a very small blade for your money with it. I think it'd just be better off carrying a pocket knife in that instance. In terms of the other tools that come with it, you can you can pop them out. You've got your file, you've got a, a screwdriver, you've got a, a flathead and uh, which doubles as a pry bar. And then on the other side, you've got even more capabilities. So you've got the Leatherman scissors, you've got a an awl, and you've got a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver as well. Finally, it has a little tweezers tucked away in the back of it here. The tweezers got this nice little taper on it, which uh, is really great for pulling splinters out. And I have used it for that. But besides that, I'm not sure who this is for. I did get a lot of comments on the video that I made that some people love this and I'm delighted that's great you each to their own but for me Leatherman is about a pliers it's about a, a true multi-tool that helps replace some of the tools in your box or gets you out of a pinch taking the pliers out of it defeats the purpose and makes it less good than some of the alternatives out there but I did say there was one category that Leatherman is failing in and that one of their competitors is beating them in. And this is in the mid-sized. I used to love carrying these mid-sized to small Leatherman tools. This is the Leatherman Juice S2, the Leatherman Juice C2. If you know, you know. They're not one-handed juice. They're not as good as those other Leathermans I talked about, but they are small and they are great for just sticking in the bottom of your pocket. You, you know, I have a deep carry clip on this that used to hang in and uh, I loved having it. It got me out of loads of pinches. It had a bottle opener, things like that these are great but you can't buy them anymore and the place where i think they're getting beaten is by this sog pint i think it's called a pint 
Look at the size of this. This is a tiny little multi-tool. Now I'm not saying that this multi-tool competes with the Arc. Of course it doesn't. It doesn't compete with the P2, but it does fit a niche where you wanna have a smaller pocketable multi-tool, where you can have a pliers, you can have a needle nose, and you can have a wire strippers, but you can also have locking blades. You can, you've got a tweezers, you've got like, look at all the little tools that this has. A scalpel blade, a blade, it's got um, a small screwdriver, it's got a package opener, it's got a seat belt cutter, it's got a, a metal file, a small saw. So pulling out the other side, it's got a serrated blade, a bottle opener, can opener combo, it's got a Phillips screwdriver, um, and it's got a scissors. So given that you've got all this in this tiny little package, I would love if Leatherman brought out something of Leatherman quality. Can you imagine they brought out a, you know, a mini Wave Plus in a smaller form factor? I would absolutely pay $80, $90 for this small form factor to have the power of a little Leatherman and the quality of a little Leatherman in this size. And I think that Leatherman have dropped the ball on this. They used to compete in this category. They used to have a number of contenders in this category. But I think when people ask me what's the best multi-tool, small pocketable multi-tool, I think that this is it and I make recommendations on this all the time as well. Okay, so what are the things that you disagree with? Talking about Leatherman is one of those dangerous areas where people really feel strongly one way or another. What are the things on here that you agree with me on? What are the things you think are total nonsense? I'd love to hear about in the comments below. And what are some of the things that you carry with you instead of a Leatherman or, or a SOG pint? Tell me about things that you like because I'm always looking for new tools. All right, I hope this video was useful. Good luck.